Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to take these pieces here, all these ends of this four and a half inch pipe, this real heavy end. These things are super heavy. They're like, some of them are half inch or better on the ends here. So they are heavier than I'll get out. And they're a little bit uh, magnetized or a lot magnetized. So I really wasn't sure if the scrap yard would take them. Most likely they won't. So it puts you in a situation where you either got to do something with them or bury them or, or, or something. So they've been laying here and I've been racking my brains and I finally decided to make some more pipe racks out of them. And I'm gonna do that by welding them together like I've already got some here. And then I'm gonna take some more four and a half inch pipe, come up and then over. And we're pretty much gonna be making. All right, so before I share with you the couple of things that I've learned about welding on magnetized pipe, I'm curious how old you are. Let me know in the comments how old you are and how long have you been stick welding? This right here, but out of the, out of the pipe. Be a runner there, a runner there, and then the rest of it will just be four and a half inch pipe, which is what we're working on right here. We've got several of them cut. We've got just a couple more to cut out. So that's what we're working on today. I did not bevel these or anything, but I did use 7018 to weld them together. I just slammed them up. I might have left a, a you know a tiny gap, but then I just turned my weld machine up and just welded it uphill all the way around. I didn't even put a straight edge or anything on it. Uh, I like to call this farm status, you know what I mean? Eighteen and a quarter from inside to inside, which means from throat to throat down here, but we've got to transfer our line over here to the to the right plane, if you will. Show you a little trick I learned on the pipeline. Catch and release. Kidding, that's not what it's called at all. It's really just called catch. Riding that line. A 
riding that line. Now we'll throw a square in here. Okay, it needs to lean this way, so I'm gonna attack this side first. I have a strange feeling it's gonna be magnetized because of these shavings that are stuck on the end of here. Mm. A little bit, not bad, but it is a little bit. So when I get on some pipe that's a little bit magnetized, the uh, attacking it with 7018 is a little bit more difficult, so I like to take my uh, 532 8010 or 6010 will work also. Keep it on the same heat that I had my uh, 332 on, which is, uh, let's see, I'm on the 150 range on my left knob on my SAE 300, and then on my fine current I'm on 55. And then whenever I start welding, I just, uh, if it doesn't work going one direction, I just go the other direction. Like I was welding, I was trying to weld uphill, like so. And it looks like I can get away with it here, but in, but in some scenarios, it's real worse. So then I'll just go the other direction, and sometimes it'll weld a little better. Now we're on this other side where I've fooled around with it. Uh, we've also got a gap over here. That's not not going to help. But uh, another thing, especially with 8010, maybe not so much with 6010, but with 8010, once it gets about half or maybe a little bit less than half left over, it'll be even harder to weld with on magnetized pipe. So I'll just get a new rod instead of trying to burn it all the way down because you'll just continue to fight it if it's magnetize bad enough. Another thing you can do is uh, weld reverse polarity which just means essentially just swapping your ground and your uh, stinger. Welding with your ground I mean. You can either swap your leads at your machine or you can like if you're running a T300 for ground and your stinger, you can just swap your ground and stinger and weld with your ground. And the more weld you get on it, the easier it gets.
All right, now the most exciting part, driving the 95. My advice for this week for those of you that commented in the comment section and let me know your age and how long you've been stick welding. For those of you that are 16 or maybe you just now started stick welding, you might be 50, 60, 30, doesn't matter, but you just started stick welding, my advice to you is hood time. Burn as much stick rod on anything as possible. Whenever you build something, build it with stick rod. Just weld, 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 weld. You can't get enough hood time. You cannot burn too many welding rods. Burn as much welding rod as possible. That will help you with your uh, welding, stick welding in general, but especially welding on magnetized pipe. And for those of you that commented with tons of years of stick welding experience, I'm curious. Did you learn anything from this video? And what tips do you have for us youngsters about welding on magnetized pipe? Let us know in the comments. Thank you all for watching. For more helpful resources, check out our website, arosswelding.com. Check out our online store. Check out our trade school, arosswelding.school. I hope you have an awesome weekend. If you wanna get notified about anything that happens with Aros Welding online, you can go to arosswelding.com and get on our email list. That way we can send you an email whenever anything new happens. Again, thanks for watching and remember, learn something every day.